Hey everybody, it's Fang here with uh, this week's Design Cinema. So what you see here are um, a bunch of character stuff. We've been doing uh, environments and sets for a while now, so I thought uh, we'll do some um, some softer surface stuff, as we call it in the industry. Um, now, of course, there's a lot of this kind of stuff on, on YouTube. Uh, there's far more character design type of stuff out there than sets and environments. Um, but anyways, I thought it'd be fun to show you guys, uh, I guess, my work process for this. Um, but just like everything else, there's a billion ways to do anything. So this is just one of the ones that we showed our students. Um, this has been fast forwarded about twice the speed. So you're watching about, um, uh, yeah, it increased about 50%. I think the actual thing is about hour and 10 minutes for this entire tutorial. Uh, uh, we reduced it down to about 30. So anyways, um, the, the beginning of this uh, video is missing just slightly. You saw the three sketches. It's because I forgot to um, press the record button on Camtasia when I started the thing for the students. But, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, let me take a drink here. But this is another tutorial we've done live in the class for a sponsored project. So in this case, the the project is actually Bubblegum Crisis, which some of you might know. It's a old uh, older IP, I guess, from Japan that a company is tr currently uh, taking into a film format. So they actually asked our students to do some uh, some brainstorming just to get the design team inspired. Uh, this is the kind of thing we've done before uh, in other schools, such as Art Center. We did a project with uh, with Michael Bay on the um, the island film and things like that. So so that way students get to experience uh, what it's like to work in real production. So this is just a quick demo showing students how to quickly capture designs. Right uh, At this point, we're not going to do something super fancy, super tight. However, we can't make it so loose that the clients, especially um, very busy clients such as directors, uh, they don't need to second guess. They need to see it, they get it, uh, and then we move on. right? So this is kind of a tutorial based on that. And what you saw me do right now is take a very simple sketch and kind of just filled it in because we're trying to keep the silhouette very, very strong. And uh, let me take a drink for a second. In this case, I'm doing a few characters. I think in the original story, there are about three or four girls. I think four girls, right? Um, and so I'm trying to design little uniforms to match each of their specialty. And of course, the IP is old. It's from uh, the early 90s or uh, late, uh, yeah, I think early 90s is when this IP was quite popular. So just like films like Transformers and these things or Iron Man, you have to update it for today's audience. So we're making these suits, at least in this pass, I'm making the suits a little bit more real world. So they're not walking around this huge, uh, very plasticky armor versus uh, in these designs, <coughs> they're a little bit more real world, right? Leather, carbon fiber, these type of materials. My approach here was thinking more about uh, as a design, because you know, even though we're drawing, it's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to sell a design here to the clients, right? So my approach for this is more based on motorcycle or car racing uh, outfits, mixed in with a little bit of um, police or uh, SWAT team kind of things, right? But very shiny, because at the end of the day, if this film is about four sexy girls uh, fighting crime, you got to make sure the girls look good, right? That their suit is sexy. You don't want to. Uh, put them in a huge outfit where you can't show out the female form that kind of defeats the purpose a little bit right so for a female figure you obviously want the hourglass shapes and and those sexy curves to all come out so we're trying to make it that's why a lot of these kind of things tend to be body tight outfits you have to understand the audience and what your film is trying to do right so the audience watching this just like uh, you know, Iron Man, you're going to watch it for the Iron Man suit. Transformers, you're going to watch it for the giant robots. Uh, <coughs> those things, you cannot be lost in the production. So if this is Bubblegum Crisis, then the audience <coughs> want to watch uh, four sexy girls uh, sh shoot bad guys or whatever, right? So, <coughs> excuse me, I still got a slight, slight cough, but not much. One thing to think about is like Charlie's Angels, you know, that type of thing. Very similar in approach. You got to show off the girls. Um, so right now I'm just taking the line drawing, we silhouette it, and then just putting some minor details so that way uh, we could see some initial designs. Right, very loose, you can see I don't have no, almost no layers. Um, right there, I only have two. Right. I'm making my dark background a little bit darker so the black comes out very slick. So the highlights, the white highlights read. So the drawing is not the best drawing here. It's very quick. I could, even, even me looking at it now, this is done uh, almost a few months ago, uh, the original recording. Uh, but as I look at it now, I can see there's some problems in the shoulders. There's some minor uh, issues on the hips. But overall, it, what we're trying to do is capture the, the design. Um, and that's the core of this uh, tutorial. 
right? I'm not trying to draw a beautiful um, character illustration. If I was doing that, you know, my background is industrial design, which is hard surfacing, uh, things like vehicles, um, robots, environments, sets. Uh, so characters is one of those things that is a, kind of like a byproduct of what we do. We still have to do it in departments uh, because in on, on a film you have to do everything. You can't be like, oh, I don't do this or I don't draw that. You have to draw everything the directors or uh, art director wants you to do. Um, so, however, characters probably not something we do all the time in industrial design. We do mostly hard surface. Um, so I treat these things more like like a car or a, a robot or whatever. Uh, to me, it's about design. All right. So. If I was doing a, a much tighter drawing for this, I'd probably have way more references for a characters where we try to draw out the pose perfectly and then do the design on top. Uh, <coughs> it all depends on what you uh, what you are working on. So, but this is a very quick process. Again, we're gonna get three designs out of this in under um, pretty much just about an hour. So here, just working on design. You see, I'm putting some SWAT uniform type stuff, um, some gun racks. So this is gonna be the the um, the weaponized girl. So I don't know which one is that. Maybe that's I forgot all the names. Cilia, Pris, uh, something like that. Right? These girls' names, but they all have their kind of personalities. One's like a kind of network nerdy chick. Then you got the sexy, playful one, uh, which we'll get to. And then you got the very calm, uh, seductive ones. You know, typical of these kind of grouped uh, entertainment things, where where a bunch of girls or a bunch of dudes are grouped and they each have their personality, right? So here the design is coming in part. Um, the helmet, I reduced it quite a bit. Again, this is not the real design for the film or anything. This is showing students a, a thinking process and to make sure your, your design and your thinking process gels together. So here I'm trying to go for a sexy, slick, but still weaponized suit that is buildable on a real person, that we can actually make this in a costume department uh, versus the original IP where if you build it, it'll be quite silly because it'd be giant plastic helmets. Uh, these girls won't be able to walk in them. So the helmet design is a little bit important in this because the original suit, they have to be hidden. Apparently these girls in the story, uh, nobody knows who they are. Kind of like Batman in a way where you don't know um, who they are. So you have to cover up the face. This one actually looks like kind of like a Batgirl now that I look at it. You know? But those are supposed to be little blaze, maybe some antenna transmitters. Um, you know, Because we do have to keep some of the original, uh, I guess, design direction from the from their IP. Otherwise, if you change it too much, then the original fans would be like, "What? What are you doing with the, with this IP?" You know. So here's some cleanup, just erasing out. You see, I don't use too many layers when I do these quick stuff, uh, on purpose. That way, you get the generation one feel, which means your drawing, your cleanup, all happens at the same time. That I'm not drawing, overlaying, drawing, overlaying, drawing, overlaying, and to get a very clean result. And by doing this, that the final result of this image <clears throat> actually looks rough which works in your favor because it looks like something that's straight out of the art department, looks very quick, looks very concepty, and it gives a talking point. And what that means is if your clients are looking at this image here, it doesn't look so refined that they're scared or hesitant to make changes. Because imagine you show a drawing that looked like it took five days to do. The client's gonna be like, oh man, this is so tight. What if I, you know, if I make a change here, is it gonna piss people off, you know, things like that? Whereas this is so quick, they're like, look, okay, switch out the gun, let's do this, do this, do that. It's fine because the whole drawing didn't take time to do. And that's what these talking point drawings are, are supposed to do. Okay, so here's the uh, second drawing that we did. So you can see the initial sketch is super, super loose underneath just to hold the form. And then very quickly, I go into silhouette because I gotta make sure that when you use this method, this kind of silhouette uh, sketch method, that all three in this case are gonna be different from each other. All right, so this is gonna be the slick, um, sexy version, right? So we've got the military version on the left. The middle is gonna be my slick, um, you know, kind of sexy, seductive kind of girl. So we're probably gonna put her, uh, I think I'll turn her into a kind of like a ninja outfit to play off that kind of slick, um, idea. Of course, all the girls get high heels that way. Just like the original. If you watch the original uh, anime, they have these crazy high heels on. Uh, makes the girls' legs look longer. 